These are the five biggest fake news myths in cybersecurity. Max and phones don't get viruses? What oh boy. Heck? This is the old na 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 boo boo, stick your head in doo doo argument that Macs don't get viruses, as if to say that they're literally incapable of it because they're so well secured, an ass argument. And it's about time that we stopped with this nonsense. I use a Mac because Macs are uh, stupid people friendly. Now I can get behind the argument that Macs are targeted less, probably because not even hackers wanna deal with Mac OS ass coding. In actuality, the main reason is that Windows is just more lucrative because more people use it. This means a bigger attack service and more chances for the bad guys who make Z big bucks with their ransomware or crypto mining or what have you. But if you start to think that Macs and other personal devices like your phone, smart TV, toaster even, are safe, think again. This sets a bad precedent to avoid updates and other common basic security practice. You can't click whatever you want on your phone. Stop. Your phone, for all intents and purposes, is a mini computer. A teeny tiny computer. It's like a little baby unicorn. With computing power that was unfathomable just 20 years ago. And the threat landscape is a growing because technology is getting baked into everything. The dark side of IoT devices and their hackability. That's a word. Trust me. You don't have to go far to find stories that are going around about smart light bulbs opening up your home or business to literal infiltration of your network. Scary stuff, but truly fascinating how integrating technology into literally everything is shooting ourselves in the foot. I just f***ing shot myself. But creating opportunities for cybersecurity professionals to step in and say, I told you so. The real reason I use a Mac is because I go to a lot of questionable websites. Look, what I'm trying to tell you is, <laughs> If you're gonna surf po Point being, don't neglect to update your operating system, applications, firmware, everything on your Macs, your phones, and everything that connects to your network. Don't be lazy, unless you know, you don't care. To which I say, Good luck with that. If you don't want to rely on luck, you should look into ThreatLocker, the sponsor of this video. ThreatLocker is the go-to platform to make zero trust a reality on your devices, even if they're using gross Mac operating systems. They're protected using a method called whitelisting, or more commonly referred to as a zero trust approach. The bad guys are cooking up malware, ransomware on the daily for every operating system out there. Every browser looking for any and every opportunity to exploit a vulnerability that will allow them to gain access to your stuff. With ThreatLocker, any new application, script, obvious Trojan that Carl thought was a sweet PDF tool is blocked. Now the way it works is that during the initial learning phase, a few weeks by default, a list of everything that is running on your device, on your computer is cataloged. Now after the learning phase, you can go through and decide whether to allow, block, or allow with caveats using another neat threat locker exclusive called ring fencing. With ring fencing, you can allow Chrome or your browser of choice, Safari, Ugh. to run, but not allow it to access things like PowerShell or command line, and even prevent it from accessing folders or files that you know your browser has no business trying to access. So Carl can try downloading all the pups, puas, and grayware that he wants. ThreatLocker's going to block it all. ThreatLocker is taking zero trust to a whole nother level, and I'm here for it. So if you wanna play with the latest and greatest in zero trust technology, check out the link below. A strong password is all I need for security. No, no it's not. This comes in multiple forms of stupid. Some people think that you can create a complicated ass combobulated long string of characters for your password and use it across every site out there. And that's all you need. Some people think that regularly changing your password is gonna save them. No, no it won't. NIST does not comply with that anymore. It's funny how, Best practices change so quickly. It's almost as if we have to constantly be on our toes, learning. Nothing will ever be truly safe. We're all fucked. Good passwords alone are not enough. Why? Because phishing exists. But I'm not stupid enough to put my password in a credential harvester. Yes, you are. Either hands to stupid keyboard or via a stolen session. Yes, clicking one link without even typing your login info can steal your credentials. This is called your session token. Well, I have MFA. <laughs> to break it to you, but that session includes your MFA token. Sessions? Tokens? What the fuck are you talking about? When you sign into something, you don't have to re-sign in every single time. People had to do that, they would riot or just not use the site. You don't have to sign in every single time by using a session token. Convenient, until it's not. Now using this handy chart, you can see person click link, crazy mumbo jumbo JavaScript, scrape a session token, done. You're fucked. Crazy, huh?
crazy awesome. <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how sophisticated user account compromise can get. I deal with a lot of this crap on a daily basis, and uh, I'm starting to Think of some clever ways to mitigate uh, users' stupidity. And phishing awareness is not one of them, because they, they gonna do it anyways. Stolen cookies, auth tokens, and sort of a newer one, pre-saved autofill exploits. The new kid on the block. Those are fun, malicious web pages that simulate a form just to trigger your autofill. You never typed it, but the browser handed it over, no questions asked. Ah. Beautiful. Make as complicated of a password as you want. One misclick and you're done. Incognito mode makes you anonymous online. No, it doesn't. Not in the way you want it to. So please, someone explain to all the boomers and zoomers, not the millennials. We know better. The golden generation. Incognito mode, despite what the cute little anonymous looking icon may lead you to believe, is not a magical cloak of invisibility. You're a wizard. I'm a what? All it does is stop your browser from stealing your history, cookies, and form data locally. Your ISP, websites, the government can still see what you're doing. Now, surprisingly, I didn't mention this in my how to become invisible online video because I thought it was common sense. Come to find out, it's not. I guess my common sense is big brain for the general population. Oh boy, now I'm stupid. So what does that say about the general population? Do you ever notice that? How many really stupid people you run into during the day? Watch that video if you truly want even a slight chance at hiding what you're doing online. Data, data, data in the cloud is automatically safe. People think just because your digital goods are stored up in the cloud, some magical mythical place. It's a double rainbow all the way. God, it's a double complete rainbow. Oh, my front yard. <laughs> where people store sensitive stuff like Google Drive, OneDrive, iCloud, ugh, whatever cloud storage you can think of is fully secure. No worries, bro, it's up there somewhere unreachable. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> it's reachable. You just moved where it's stored. Hank Hill knows better than this even. Cloud storage providers certainly have some pretty robust security in place because they have a lot of money to throw at it. But putting all your faith in someone else's ability to secure your stuff leads to negligence. Don't be lured into this false sense of security. You still need to do your part and do basic security practice like strong passwords, MFA, which we just learned isn't foolproof. Can't be walking around being stupid and expect your bank info to not get stolen while you're going around visiting sus sites. Go into your security settings in all all of your accounts and set up whatever security monitoring alerts controls are available to secure your shit. Don't be lazy. You can't go around being lazy anymore. Not in this economy. Last of all, the elephant in the room, AI is going to solve all of our cybersecurity problems. This is the big one. Now I've already addressed this multiple times in the form of how it applies to cybersecurity jobs, but generally speaking, the consensus is that AI is a silver bullet, making everything hack proof with zero human intervention. Some people assume that it can single-handedly with just one of its freaky AI hands, detect and stop all the cyber threats. One word, social engineering. That's two words, dumbass. AI is getting baked into everything. Sure, it can analyze data and identify threats faster, but still requires careful tuning and human oversight, or the business is gonna get set on fire when everything is randomly blocked and sites are down. Hackers are leveraging AI too. So it's becoming a battle of AI against AI, which is confusing if you think about what that might look like in this unrealistic silver bullet AI setup that people seem to think is possible. Anybody who thinks this way has no clue how much human oversight is needed that isn't technical at all goes into securing a business. Look at this chart and tell me, how is AI going to take over all of it? Come on, I have yet to hear a solid argument. Also, the human aspect. The people doing work in the business are always the weakest link. All it takes is Carl in accounting clicking a link, and he will every time. So unless you replace everyone with AI, I don't get what people are misunderstanding about the limitations of AI. I genuinely believe that people don't put in the effort needed to fully understand something before giving their opinion on it. If you don't know what you're talking about, why are you talking about it? Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, So people don't realize how off base saying something like AI is going to take over all of cybersecurity jobs. AI is oversimplified by simple people. AI will automate basic tasks and analysis, but with how sophisticated attacks are getting, I don't see a fully automated AI security setup with no humans keeping the AI in check happening anytime soon. Oh.